Yeah, I walked down here um, earlier yeah. to come check it out and I saw a whole bunch of crap running around. Okay. Oh, fuck. Hell yeah, really slippery. Oh, yeah. I can't even go over there. Okay. Is there a lot in there? Yeah. What is that, a shrimp? I think oh, there's some a... shrimp here too. Oh, damn. Grab them. See the eyes rolling back at you? Look, look, look. A whole bunch of them. Oh, that, that's going to be good bait right there. Yeah. Nope. Not there. Nope, he jumped out. Oh, look at this. Look at this shrimp. I'm, I'm gonna rely on you, bro. I got you. <laughs> right there, right in front of you. It's a buyer, eh? I would have. Look at it. It's just standing here. I slipped already. Sorry, just stay there. How much you get already? Uh, half. Half? That should be good. All right. Do not wear Crocs. <laughs> we try. The night. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> Blackout shades. Ready to go to sleep. Welcome back to Fish Cooks and Eats. If you're new to the channel, I would appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe and that like button. Now. This trip here, we did a fishing trip around the south of Rhode Island. And you can see from the underwater footage, I caught some very interesting footage down there. Now you can see that I hooked onto a black sea bass. And then one of the trigger fish just started to follow him around. And they're not very shy. I'm jiggling some bait around him and he's very interested in it. He looked like he wants it. Just my luck. I forgot to pack my hooks for the trigger fish. They got very small mouths, so I'm using a 3 art hook. So it's going to be very difficult to hook onto them because they like to nibble on the edges of the crab. Plus, they got very small mouths. But today was a very lucky day because we had 20 feet visibility of the water. I could not believe how clear it was. Today, I was only planning to go get some tautog. And, wow, to my surprise... Triggerfish was around. Oh boy, that's even better. But trying to catch a triggerfish with a three odd hook, it's gonna be very difficult. That's like a, taking a bow and arrow and trying to hit the bullseye. You know, you may miss the bullseye a couple times, but you always get that one lucky shot. And today I had four lucky bullseye. Yeah, we got lucky that the triggerfish was around today because all the tautog was all short. So I started going after the trigger fish. Today's one of those days when it's too nice outside, fish are not gonna bite. I'm not sure what it is, but I think they get more active when it's a little bit more rough outside. When the waves is crashing against the rock, the underwater current is moving all the bait in and out. So who knows? All that matters is I'm not driving two and a half hours back home hungry. That's the one thing about fishing. You know you're always going to catch something to eat and it's always going to be fresh. You might not know what you're going to make dinner tonight, but when you go fishing, you're always going to get something to make dinner. It can be porgy, black sea bass, triggerfish, turtog, who knows, bluefish, stripers. Now when you're going out for a turtog, you got to make sure you have a sensitive rod but with a strong backbone because these fish right here they got some power they'll run you right into the rock and also sometimes they have some really light bites and you know it may be a 15 inch or it may be a 20 inch and they'll just tap the line so when i set the hook i try to tend not to swing too hard because you can probably pop the hook out of his mouth because when it's chewing on a crab Maybe it's not fully engaged in the crab or something. Who knows? One of my friend always tells me, do not set the hook. Just lift the rod. 
You know, it's so difficult when you're so used to setting the hook and you got to train yourself to lift the rod. So I got to keep trying that out. This morning we rushed to get into the water for fishing and we didn't have breakfast, so we're kind of hungry. The plan was to do some tatak tacos, but now my mouth is salivating, thinking about doing some trigger fish tacos. Oh boy, this is going to be the first and the last fish that was caught happened to be a trigger fish too. And this one was the one I used to make lunch. All right, let's get ready to cook lunch. Now with trigger fish, the skin, they're very tough. So you gotta make sure you have a pretty sharp knife because you have to score the skin first. So I'm starting right in the middle where the fin and ear is. I'm just taking my knife and just running it from the front to back. Taking a pair of pliers, rip out the skin, running your knife along the bone, take out the fillets, let's fillet out. I'm gonna cut it right along the middle, to separate the meat. And I'm gonna feel for the pin bones. I'm gonna cut that out. And it's gonna be a simple mix. We're here, I'm just gonna put some frying powder. Fry them up. A little bit golden brown. Now I got my own pack sauce here. Just a little dab of this. Next, I got some homemade guacamole. A little bit of onions, some tomatoes, top it off with cilantro, but there you this go. This is a trigger? Trigger. No, trigger fish, right? Yeah. That we just caught like a few hours ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.